Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to bring in this flask because that has a slightly different type of, of environment that I can play with here. I'm going to go ahead and click on insert and image and this time I'm going to choose that flask. Now I can see here that it's 461 pixels wide, 500 tall. It's a GIF and it's coming in at 16K. Again, not a very, very hefty file, but in terms of dimensions, it is fairly large. 461 is over half of the size of my entire um, div um, block here. So here is my entire large image. And again, for my purposes, maybe this is what I need. But chances are I'm going to go ahead and shrink that up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I shrink that down to this. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to move that away just a little bit so we can focus in on this guy. Making it maybe a little bit larger here. Okay, in this particular case, the situation is that this was originally a GIF. I can see that from my file name here. It ends with a dot GIF. You can pronounce that GIF or GIF, doesn't matter. One of the things that you need to know about a GIF is that GIF, because of its compression format, can go up to 256 colors, which does seem to me a lot of colors, but when you consider a JPEG, which can go up to even 24 million, um, you notice that, you know, 256 colors isn't terribly large. One of the other things that is special about a file being in a GIF format, because of their file size of 256 or their color size of 256, we often see line drawings or line art here, clip art, and that's fine. The other thing to take a look at this particular file here, we can see that there are certainly probably not 256 colors overall displayed here. So we can get even better at reducing its file size by telling it not to display so many colors. In addition to that, we can also get um, even fancier by picking one of the colors to become transparent. Now, transparency is something you can do on both a GIF and a file type called Ping8. You cannot do transparency on a photograph. I'm going to re-emphasize that later on, but let's go ahead and get into making it currently. I've clicked on my particular image. Now I'm going to come down to my uh, image settings tool, same tool as we used before. I'm going to go ahead and click on that one time. Now one of the things I could play with here is I could choose a different number of colors. If I do that, I can see over here I didn't lose a terrible number of, of uh, a terrible amount of quality, but I did greatly reduce the file size to 2.2 kilobytes. Not going to do that just yet either. Um, by having shrunk it down so small to begin with, I've already dropped it from 16k to about 5k. Significant savings there. But I could uh, obviously just based off of, of the colors reduce it in file size overall. This is though what I would like to um, show you. I could choose to remove unused colors, which means that I could make it even smaller. And once I do that, I can drop that down. <clears throat> the other thing I can do here is this transparency factor. Notice that my image is sitting against a yellow background and I have the white block that the image is in originally. If I want that color white to drop out, therefore I would want all of this kind of erased here. I can do that right here within my image optimization area. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this at the same time so you can see what it looks like. Notice here that the default is for no transparency and I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to choose alpha transparency. Again, there's some uh, understanding behind why you would choose index transparency versus alpha, but for our purposes alpha is fine. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and these are three tools that I can use. One, the first tool is to select the transparent color. Now if I need to select an additional transparent color I can use my second option. If I need to take away a transparent color or take away a color from being transparent I could use this tool. My purpose here is to go ahead and select the transparent color. I'm going to click on this button and I could come up here and visualize it here in my color palette, but better yet, I'm going to come over here to the actual image. I'm going to click on it and go ahead and drop that 
out. Now, if you take a look here in my actual image, you can see that this has become a gray and white checked pattern, but also this has become a gray and white checked pattern. The reason that has worked is that when a col color is dropped out, regardless of where the image color appears, is where it's going to drop out. So if we go back to our original image, we can see that there is white in the middle of this flask. So once I chose the color white to drop out, the image cannot discriminate between what is outside the visual portion of the image versus what's inside. So once I pick a color to drop out, it drops out across the board. For my purposes, that's OK. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. And if I click away, I can now see that I have an image that has uh, a transparent background. And that looks better than what I had earlier.